Hello, everyone. Today I'm here with ENFP Nate Rossa. You might have seen him in a couple of my other videos. You might be a loyal subscriber to his podcast, which I will link below. Today we are going to do something new, and this might turn into a regular segment on my channel, but we are going to be dissecting the ENFP brain. And <laughs> Nate here is my lab rat. And we're a going willing to just, subject. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be sort of taking off the mask and looking at the wiring behind the ENFP. Oh, I can already feel the vulnerability. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're yeah. gonna open you up. It's like Lord, target the seven for and opening up. Goes, <laughs> and it goes. I should clarify that. Only share what you feel comfortable sharing. Uh, <laughs> only share whatever details you want to share. But for those of you that who is don't such an know, epi dom way to say it. <laughs> only if you're comfortable. But at the same time, definitely do share. <laughs> also, if you're not comfortable, my NI might just like read your mind. And <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but okay, epi doms read me to filth anyway. So so I'm doing this for a couple reasons. One of the reasons is that. Um, I think that a lot of times when we're talking about personality types, like I've done lots of interaction videos before where I, mm -hmm. I, sh I show you guys what it looks like when I talk to an ENFP, but really I'm just showing you what that interaction looks like. I'm not really like pointing out, okay, so do you see the NE, do you see the FI and all of that? And mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people talking about type, they are talking about the behaviors or like the potential traits which can be confusing. So let's, this is honestly kind of like a case study as well. We, because we're going to be looking, actually displaying the cognition behind, which every personality type is based on the cognition behind your actions. Mm -hmm. So, and another reason why I'm doing this is because for those of you who don't know, uh, me and my friend Crystal have a personality typing service. And so if you were maybe considering that, or maybe you don't know your type, these are actually some of the questions I ask people that I type. So yeah, let's get started, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> and we also might go on some tangents, but anyway, the goal of this video is to Wait, you mean Nina. I'm gonna go on on some tangents? <laughs> yeah, and you know, I might indulge the tangents because <laughs> I realize that they have a purpose. And, Anyway, <laughs> the Lords of MBTI for coffee. <laughs> Same. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a vague question. And so okay. I want you okay. to just answer it in the way that makes the most natural sense for you. And I can okay. add guiding questions if you need, but describe gotcha. a typical day of how you usually invest your time from your morning to evening routine. Okay, well, routine is going to be very loose for me. Mm -hmm. um, while I value it a lot and I do want to have a pretty good routine and a pretty strong one, it's I have a tendency to want to shake up the tree because I can't just have it like, oh, let's wake up, go to the washroom and like, you know, fix your face or take a shower or something. It's like it's going to have to be I wake up, maybe I'll do push-ups or like, no, maybe I'll fix my bed first and then, then I'll go to the washroom or I'll go to the washroom first and then do like the bed and afterwards. It's like, I have a general idea of what things I need to work, finish in that first hour of waking up, but it's not going to be the same. It's like sequential. It's cannot be sequential. It has to be like thrown all over the place until I done. Although I give myself that framework of like, you know, that hour, make it happen. And then like, play around with it just as long as you get everything done do you find and, it fun yeah. to like would you say you do something different every every day or it's like under... fooling myself into doing something different every day <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's like one day you might I don't know brush your teeth then shower the other day yeah or maybe like there's this one time like I woke up I'd be like hey I'll just brew a cup of coffee myself although right lately my ISTJ dad's been brewing coffee every morning which is annoying because it's like no that was a potential that I could mess around with oh my God. <laughs> and how do you discern what to do like um how how does it how's the decision making process like if you wake up in the morning and you're not sure what to do first it would say between two things one would be what the body is feeling in the moment 
Um, and I mean that in a sense that like, what if I wake up and suddenly I feel like a little bit of like something on my gums here and I'm kind of like, wait, I need to brush my teeth. Like I feel uncomfortable. Um, or like I woke up and I'm like, I'm feeling a little too hot. No, I need to like get out and fix this right now. Um, I've learned that by consciously taking responsibility for my comfort, it does help me later on. Um, I don't, this is definitely not a thing I've done when I was younger, but it was something I've been implementing more into my life. Um, that's like the one half of it. The other half is like waking up and already having a, a million potentials like popping up already. So like if I, cause I'm a morning person. So when I wake up, the first thing I want to do is like generate ideas already. So if I'm not focusing on that comfort, you know, body sensation, blah, blah, blah stuff, I'm going to be dreaming up how the day is going to go. And that's going to like continuously mm -hmm. flavor my whole day. Like I'm going to be like, oh, oh my goodness, today's going to be that day. What if I do this? What if I do that? Oh, I should get into an idea debate with somebody online right now and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you know, my energy starts rising again. Like So to pause this, I want to share that. If you were to ask an SE Dom that question, <laughs> they would tell you, they would tell you, oh, well, I have... I live with my parents, you know, I work as this. Typically I, you know, wake up around nine. They tell you that they answer the question. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you didn't answer the question because the thing is, is that from you answering that question, we got to see how you approach those approach questions and how you approach finding the truth to things and mm -hmm. responding to things. And this is something that I'm not saying that so the question itself I asked, describe a typical day, and we're still going to dive into that more. Mm -hmm. I want to take a moment to illustrate that your day might look exactly like an ESFP's day from an observer. Mm. They might also um, change things up or whatever. But the way that you answered the question was very N-E. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so these are sort of the things that we have to look at when typing people is that um it is important to know what your typical day is and you haven't you haven't really scratched the surface yet you talked about mm. the philosophy behind how you think about things mm. and the possibilities you see right mm -hmm. um but you didn't really share that much tangibly of what are those, t what are those possibilities? Mm -hmm. Like, do you no, like coffee? Do you like, do you have a different specific type of coffee? When I've asked SPs this question, they'll tell me what their favorite coffee is. They'll, they'll tell me those things, you know, mm -hmm. or like maybe just, I, love how, I think they'll start with it first, right? Like they'll start with, um, yeah, that concept because it's like, I think, I guess age wise has helped me in some sense because it's like since I when I was a kid, all I've been all I did was like explore preferences. Like I never stopped exploring preferences. Mm -hmm. So when I when people ask me anything, I can't give a preferential type of answer because I don't have that. It's also, like weird for me to think of that. Your general discomfort around the question is very ENP. Mm. I would say so the E P temperament um is always so EPs are always prepared for anything in a way. Well, okay. They're not prepared. They, they don't mentally prepare, but they just attack anything as, like, as it comes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in a way, you're prepared in the sense that you're always ready for the moment. Um, but at the same time, not really. No. Like in a, yeah. At the same time, if you were to like pin me with like an SE user, it's, it's not actual preparedness. It's like no, it's not preparedness. It, it would come off as a waste. Yeah, <laughs> it's like what a waste of time. Is the word? <laughs> what is the word? Because I feel like even if you you aren't prepared, but at the same time you believe that you can move forward. Um, it's so, funny because it's like I'm thinking like I wonder if it's like an illusion. That I'm just I'm, I'm simply fooling myself into preparing. Perhaps. Because it's like the thing is is I don't actually think we are like we as in any people like are preparing anyway. Like I don't uh -huh. even think that's a thing. I think it's just the joy that we derive, like the preference of, that we derive from dreaming up potential is enough for us. Because so, it's like for example, yeah. IJs um are 
constantly too prepared. They have too much information. They have more information than what they need mm -hmm. to move forward. Mm -hmm. Where so my INFJ girlfriend was talking about how she has this ENFP coworker that literally will like, and she I think she's also seven that will like do shots of tequila in the bathroom, but like does oh, say, <laughs> but like she does sales. <laughs> She has sales or something and she just makes everyone love her. And so she gets all these clients and she's gotten recognized. Mm. And the INFJ is like, this is bullshit. She's never prepared for any meeting. Why do people like her? I don't get it. I'm, I like, I'm so prepared, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but that's the thing is that she could make people like her. Like, and I don't know, like she doesn't need to be prepared. Yeah. Like, and, and I, I was like, well, does that bother you at like, IJs, it might bother an IJ to, I guess, reckon with the fact that, yeah, there are people out there living and breathing that aren't prepared and they're just fine. Like, mm -hmm. like <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny because it reminds me of, um, I have an ISTJ friend as well. And like, he would have post-it notes like all mm -hmm. over his wall and it will just post-it notes of everything he's prepared to do that day. Um, post-it notes mm -hmm. of things he's prepared to do like he does public speaking too so he has like notes upon notes and scripts upon scripts and that's cool um, but like you put me and him in a room and like people are going to assume that I know more because mm -hmm. I'm the one talking more or something yeah. or like I'm the one in the room generating like getting the crowd all together or whatever and it's just like and I tell them I was like oh well because like I'm just I guess bubbly you know like I'll just show up and tell like talk to people compliment them like I'm really in tune with them like you're in your head like I can't really do anything we can't do anything with that um but it's kind of like it's just interesting that that's the method that differs between us maybe it's like a yeah they're easily overwhelmed with the exposure to like the external sensation do you enjoy setting out fires which actually you literally worked with yeah. <laughs> <a> fire <laughs> I love how that's like setting up um I like starting by <laughs> no yeah. it's um I it's so weird because it's like okay I like setting up potential fires but not actually be in fire like not Do you like trust your ability it. to set them out no so no mm -mm. an INTJ said to me recently um I don't like to start fires unless I have a fire extinguisher in, in hand. <laughs> and uh, EPs, I think, maybe you don't realize that it could cause a fire. Is that like the lack of foresight and having introverted perceiving as your inferior? Mm -hmm. Like the implications of what I was about to say. Yeah, this, because uh, it, it's like there's such a focus so much on like, what needs to be right sometimes so it's like there's a situation where i literally pushed what i felt was correct onto a room without any mm. like care that anyone in the room was gonna like feel uncomfortable or like gonna how they're gonna perceive me differently like i factored them in but it to me it didn't I didn't, it didn't like really w was worth like factoring i was kind of like put it in i'm like yeah no this correct thing is still up there so i'm gonna push it um, and it like made like all the epic people uncomfortable because they were like, oh my God, you just like wrecked the mood of the room. But in my head, I'm thinking, no, something needs to be corrected. You know, and the thing is, is I mm. never thought of the implication. Like I was reminded of the implication afterwards, after the, it had passed, um, which I apologized afterwards. So it's kind of like, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Like this is a, this is a gig. Um, but it's just an, I guess it's just an example that I don't, like I will start the fire because I need to, push change without at the same time without ever thinking that I also have the responsibility to put it out when it needs to be like I'm not mm. there for the follow-through like I'm not mm. there to be like hey let's oh I you notice you're crying like oh no let me sit by you and like help you back up to your thing no I'm like oh you're crying that's your problem like, this it's reminds just... <laughs> me of this reminds me of on discord how you will enter a chat and ask like an uncomfortable question mm -hmm. and then leave the chat yep. and then Everyone else is left, I don't know, talking about, I, mm. I don't even know an example. Oh, I have one, but I'll like, I mean, no, <laughs> I, I'm going to say it. It's going to be fun. And everybody knows it's a joke that I use. Um, everyone hates me for it, but it's fantastic. It's like, I go in, I know there's a person out there who likes to drone on and on and on. And you know who you are. And they're IJs. <laughs> and they're all and IJs. He's an IJ. He's an yeah. IJ. But because I know that what he, that's what he does, it's so like easy to like, 
trigger, like not trigger, but to like push in that direction, knowing that it make that the people in the room are all FE users, that they will have no choice but to acknowledge that question in the room. But then I don't have that feeling. So I'm like, oh, I'll say it. By the way, bye. <laughs> Leave. causing chaos just leave and then i just get all these messages i hate you how could you do this because they have to listen to the guy go on and on and it was always a good day um i mean that's me reframing it i have had fun but of course at the expense of other people yeah so going, uh, so going back to your typical day would you say that um when you wake up in the morning you have a general idea of the things that need to get done but you don't know how you're going to get them done or the order or the priorities or how's that? That's kind of funny because it's like, I don't think I actually have a general idea of what needs to be done. I'm still an, I still want to explore it, you know, like, it's just, I don't like to have that imposed. If that makes sense. Maybe that's that's contradictory. Yeah. Like maybe it's contradictory in what I mentioned before, but it's just like, I know that when you wake up, you have to wake up and then like eat and get dressed or clean up, you know, all that stuff. But it's just like, I so let's How? actually talk about this. Do you have breakfast in the morning or like? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because I think that what might even be happening is that you do, you might have more of an SI style routine than me, but you just find it not worth mentioning because you might. Yeah, because I don't think it matters. Yeah, you're right. Because I, I don't think it matters. And- I don't have, I mean, I probably, I'll like forget to wash my face or I'll like not eat anything or like things like that like but it seems like the way you're talking about your morning it's like there's this sort of assumed things you do in the morning that every normal person does well I think yeah I think I assume that it's yeah I think it's everybody does it therefore it's not like for me to mention if that makes sense and at the same time it's like there's also a part of me that's also going to reason out that says or that thinks well yeah I make the breakfast every morning but I don't know what to make every morning so I know I have to eat, but I'm not going to have a decided factor of, okay, this is what I want to eat. It's more like open the fridge and then let's see what to make. Do you like like cooking? And like, what is that process like for you? um, Yes, I do. It's also, yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to go straight up with the answer. Yes, I do like cooking. Um, Time-wise is going to be a debate of whether or not, you know, I can cook whatever I want to cook. I feel like I can cook anything. I just need time. How do you go about um, deciding what to make for breakfast? Whatever's in the fridge, I think. Well, how, to be that. how does the food get in the fridge? Your parents? Well, okay. well yeah, either parents or grocery, or like my own grocery shopping. Um, like, I would like to buy something that will open possibilities of what to cook the next day. So, like, I will buy peppers, like bell peppers, because I've learned that I could use that in any kind of dish that I want to make. Like, I could make something with it. Um, I'll buy mushrooms because I know what, like, I can make anything out of that. Um, even bacon, I, I can make anything out of it. It's like, I won't buy anything like that's so specific because I don't see the point in one thing. See, you know, again, like, you're using NE here, everyone listening, because you aren't answering the question directly. You are allowing people to imagine what you might do mm-hmm. by illustrating a picture of how you are. Whereas I might say, oh, you know, I, I will go in between. Okay, so I don't eat breakfast. But if I were to answer that question about like dinner, I would say. <laughs> she <doesn't eat> breakfast. <laughs> if I were to answer that question about dinner, I would say, I pretty much go between pasta and rice every night. And I go between Italian, Asian inspired or Mexican inspired. And I just have all these spices and I have these vegetables and I just decide in the moment, do I want Italian? Do I want Asian noodle? Like I kind of just go based on, I have these sort of general categories and then whatever I feel like I, I I go between the same types of meals over and over, but see how you have a better idea of like what my actual favorite food is where I have no clue what you eat for breakfast. Well, it's oh, so funny because it's like making me think, like, is this why people assume like NFPs don't have like an identity sometimes? Like when they talk to them, it's like, I don't know what you want. Like, I don't know who you well, are. Yeah. It's like, we're do- just like- <laughs> Another thing I would tell you is that I don't eat meat and I don't eat eggs where I'm assuming that maybe, okay, so if I were to indulge you and use NE, 
I would assume, mm. I pictured that you might make an omelet. Do you make omelets? No. Okay. Not as often, I would say. Probably like once in the blue moon, actually. So mm-hmm. do you make like hash browns with those vegetables? No. no. See, I have no clue what you, what do you, you have mushrooms for breakfast? <laughs> no, that's oh my goodness. Okay, okay. Now I can connect the dots. Okay, sorry. Um, so I realized that when I give examples, yeah, they are not related to the original question <laughs> at all. The examples are to paint the picture yeah. of what might be. Still, I think yeah. we, we should be, which is what you were explaining. I just I was just kind of like, cause you know, naturally being any right now. And it finally like yeah. kicked in. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm back on earth. Thanks. <laughs> so it's not like that you weren't answering. But whenever, so whenever NPs answer questions, they will illustrate some, they will still, they'll like paint a picture. Like mm. for example, whenever I typed an ENTP and I asked about their typical day, uh, she said something like, oh, sometimes I'll just like fuck around on the internet or like I'll like, I can't even tell you what she said because I don't have, I don't remember the SI, but she's like, maybe I'll go down a rabbit hole and watch like this very specific thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not her typical day, but that was just like an example. But the fact that the way she explained what Mm -hmm. she does in the evening, she threw out a few possibilities of what she might do that were all sort of like oddly specific where it's like, you probably did that once. Mm-hmm. But that you're giving me still a picture of this sort of person you are by, I guess, share, splattering in those SI details of mm-hmm. an example of how you might be. So I actually just noticed something. This mm-hmm. is why FE Doms can read it, like can take my kind of babble properly. Um, mm-hmm. Or at least in your case, ENFJs, I would say can read it very well. Um, mm-hmm. And I think as it's noticing it, because like when you're talking about that ENTP situation, um, we are telling, we actually are telling you the typical day, but you have to like read between the lines mm, to figure it out. Mm, you, mm-hmm. It's like I'm forcing you to use intuition to know what's going on in my life. Um, mm. And I think that's in like the so realm. How, or go ahead. It's just kind of weird because it's like, um, that's kind of like how I kind of see like when I vomit any, like a lot, it's just like I will list it all out um and tell you all these 10 multiple tangents go on and on and on and on but like I, I feel like I needed the other person to kind of notice they're like wait so you go out and take groceries you go make it's like breakfast so breakfast means probably some eggs so we're gonna assume you use eggs with it you just used mushrooms as an example maybe maybe not so we're just not gonna factor that in it's just like you're like reading I'm like telling you to read indirectly telling so, you to like read between all of my little like bs <laughs> so my um <clears throat> my demonstrative ne if i were to indulge it assumed that you threw those veggies into an omelet and you just used whatever you had and put it into an omelet but i don't like to assume mm-hmm. at all especially since for example like i don't eat eggs and so i would never assume that you ate That's eggs true. unless you said it like, mm-hmm. but see, that might be a sort of a thing where N E and S I, like, there's an S I association that eggs is breakfast food, so it is reasonable for N E to assume that you eat eggs for breakfast. So mm-hmm. if an N E user assumes that, that's not a bad guess, right? Hmm. Um, exactly. Exactly. And it would it would just be kind of like hilarious to. Like I've, I've noticed it would just be hilarious, like interacting with NI and SE people. They were like, oh, but I don't do that. I'm like, oh, oh different. <laughs> yeah. So what happens for you after breakfast? <laughs> Lord, <laughs> mercy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I just realized this is this is is this the part where it's like we're gonna like eat the whole day? I just realized um this is exactly what Heidi was saying in one of her videos. Where if you ask an, an ENP, like, how was your day? We're like, who cares about my day? Let's talk about what I'm thinking. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, okay. So actually, maybe instead of asking a typical day, you can just explain a day. Like, how about yesterday? Oh, Lord. Okay, so yesterday I went out volunteering. And then I went, then I made... Um, Wait, you tarts. volunteered in the morning? 
yeah, I usually like to go volunteer. Like I'm like I'm religious, so I like to go out and. What's like, like an example, of like, like were you volunteering like through your religion or, <clears throat> and you don't have to go into too specifics, but like, um, what what service were you doing? Okay, and what it was the se that you were doing. <laughs> Oh, um, it was basically... were you feeding? Were you at a soup kitchen? Like, I don't know. That's so funny because it's like, <laughs> I don't think the details of it is worth mentioning. Like, is that if that makes any sense? Like, I think mm-hmm. it's just like, I'm walking at a mall talking to people, but I didn't really talk to anyone okay. I didn't want to talk to. So nothing happened. So mm-hmm. there wasn't any kind of highlight, only the fact that I did it. And that was it. You know, like that. I never actually have any. It's weird. It's like I'm almost like trying to find a story in everything I do to tell somebody. And mm-hmm. since I don't have that story in that morning, I'll just, yeah, I did something, but that's it. Like, I'm not going to go into detail mm. because it's not worth it. Like, yeah. what am I going to do? I walked, talked and to maybe, somebody. Maybe for it. you, maybe for you too, it's like you can't just give me the gist of it with SE unless you got into full detail with SI. Probably, yeah. Probably, where because I, I don't think I can yeah mm-mm. Or um, like I and, oh, or oh, go oh, ahead. oh and mm-hmm. I'm also like trying to speed it along because I know I have a story mm. in the afternoon I don't know if you uh, caught that okay one. oh okay that's why I was kind of like when yeah. you sit in the morning I kind of reclined back I was like oh no wait I don't want to talk about the morning I want to talk oh, about okay my that's afternoon. fair and so like- <laughs> I might assume that maybe there's some sort of fi behind why you volunteer that is personal to you and you maybe don't want to like drone on in an FE no, way. It's just boring. <laughs> it's just, it, was not, it was like a thing I do, like a routinely thing. It doesn't really but matter. See, that's the thing is that I also want to share that, yeah, it's typical for an ENFP to routinely, you know, volunteer. I, I don't know. Like, Oh, um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so. If we're gonna go like in the NI of that sense, then um, I don't. I think it depends on the NFP, like what, gr- what organization or what group that they align themselves with, and what is it important um, cause. for you to? I would say so. Align yourself with a cause. Yes, I would say so. Um, I feel like I myself have a very dubious moral compass, so aligning mm-hmm. myself with a organization or a cause is actually something really nice to have as like a a tangible reminder for myself because I know in myself I would just do whatever like if I didn't have some form of structure I'll just do whatever and it wouldn't Mm. and that like experience has taught me that that doesn't always get me what I want all right that's good enough to make my ni happy you can move on (laughs) (laughs) yay (laughs) okay um no because it's like okay because i got really excited because like my afternoon i finally got home and then i could make something like i promised this person that was gonna cook like something crazy for the first time and i was like insanely excited and was was crazy about it i've never done it i've never played with sherry like the cooking wine i've never done any of that kind of stuff i've never what played with tomato it? sauce it was a crab tart oh okay yeah it was a crab tart and then it's like i just saw the recipe like a couple days ago and i'm like oh my goodness yes please i bought the ingredients and then i made it happen and then like we then i also realized crab was a very tough flavor that's a tough like flavor to play with because it's a strong one mm. um and i figured hey the people will enjoy it because it's seafood fine but it's only gonna taste crab they're not going to taste anything mm. else. I'm not going to give them complexity. I'm not going to give them anything else. So I'm like, I got to play with this flavor somehow. And then like, it became like a moment. Um, I used so much freaking ingredients and then like threw it in. Um, and I got like other people to like, hey, can you take t- taste test this quickly? Because I see mm. the potential in it, but I could be wrong. And then they're like, mm, no, it's good. Just sprinkle like lemon or like do a lemon squeeze to give it like Interesting. Something. So you taste test things. Mm-hmm. So... Okay. So you I notice how I'm like super lively when I'm okay. talking about something that's like, oh my goodness, something new. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> See, that's all. Would you? Is that the highlight of your day, or were you getting to? Um, that was what? climax part one, and then okay. climax part two was like feeding it to the people at the party I went uh, to. Oh, okay. Because it was an anniversary so, party of like a couple, and it was oh, so nice. Sweet. So yeah, then, I was just gonna say to contrast that. I think my polar SI, like, I regularly will put too much salt, not enough salt, and just eat it and be like, oh, 
now I know for next time, like, I, I like, don't try and make it perfect. I, well, I don't know. Well, I mean, I think, well, I mean, I stuck at the routine thing. It's like, I had a recipe, but I didn't have all the ingredients. So like mm. a piece of me was like, well, I got to wing it. You know, I have to substitute mm-hmm. it. Like they wanted me to put whipped cream in it. And I was like, um, I'm lactose intolerant. I can't do that. Mm. Like that's going to kill me. Well, I wouldn't say kill me, but it's going to be like five hours in the bathroom. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so, I'm just realizing that whenever I cook something new, I enjoy it as well. But I make a lot of assumptions about what it's going to taste like. Like I, I don't taste it along the way. I can, I can guess like, yeah, I know how cayenne pepper is going to taste like with uh, butter or like, I, I don't, I don't know, have like, that. It's crazy. I don't, I have, I don't have that. I say, I, I'm so unsure when cooking. I think it's a major insecurity also from my end because I don't know how it affects my palate in a sense, because like a part of me reasons, well, it's food. I'll eat it who cares, you know, and I'm still like intuitive in that sense where it's like, I don't really care if it's food, but then there's also a piece of me that says, why not have, make it good food? <laughs> like, why not mm-hmm. elevate it? Why not make it taste great? Because what's wrong with that either? So I'm like, well, there's nothing wrong with that. So let's put a little work in it. I have an extra hour to put work in it. So like, why not? Yeah. Um, but like, I had to substitute shenanigans. Like I had to put all kinds of stuff in it to balance it out because I, I wasn't cooking for me. I was cooking for someone else. So it was like a different mm. set, set of standards. Like it, in the mm-hmm. sense, I didn't matter. It had to be like, well, yeah, maybe use the word perfect for somebody else kind of thing. Cause there was, I would say there. that this also sort of seems, and I want you to continue your story here, but it also sort of seems like FI and SI wanting to be very precise and like show your love for these people are like in a very, I don't know. It's like you have high standards for that like you want it to be right yeah um definitely because it's like uh oh, i mean in enneagram wise like i do have a three fix so there's like that whole mm-hmm. thing where you don't want you don't want to disappoint you know the people around you because you're there to provide and help and give something um so you got to make it look pretty so like that was even another yeah. option too because i had to like aesthetically it, like tangibly aesthetically make it look pretty like, at noticed, the end of the day and I'm going like oh no <laughs> so with FE and FI I think a lot of people talk about how FE you know is very outwardly caring and like FI is very in really authentic and that is a very surface level way of looking at it like mm. those things might be true in certain cases but something I've noticed is like FE is able to sort of smooth over social or social situations. It's kind of like the butter you use to smooth things over. Mm -hmm. And I think TE can also sort of be like butter. I don't know. I think of the extroverted judging as like, okay, I'll just use that to sort of smooth. Like surface area stuff, right? Yeah. Where Mm -hmm. I've noticed that FI users, when you are trying to do something for someone, you are less confident in your ability to sort of smooth it over and do something that they would like. And so instead you focus internally on, I'm going to make sure, well, you're like, your FI has the desire to do it justice. And so you're going to, um, what am I trying to say? I think that there's a lot of effort behind the scenes that, fps in particular put into the things that they give to people like because it's not just something that you just do like fjs like i like cook like for my girlfriend like all the time and i never it's like it's like i'm just it's cooking like i try i, I don't like, know I get what, you know what i mean <clears throat> yeah because like i had so i have like two best friends and the esfj and an estp and i've been all the time inviting them to come over to my place i was like hey let's have dinner um, and I'll cook for you guys. And like, the thing is, is I usually never really cook. Like, that's not my deal. It's actually my friend who cooks more, the ESFJ. She's she's a lot more better at it. Um, so it almost like put in this expect like this whole standard on me. I'm like, well, I want to be able to present something that's edible for one, <laughs> mm-hmm. which I think is fine. Like, I can make edible food, but at the same time, I also want to like elevate it because um, that's how I'm feeling inside about these two people mm-hmm. because like you view I, it as a fun challenge but also um 
as something sort of special, it seems. Sorry, what was that again? Sorry? It, it seems like you kind of want it to be special. Is that yes. accurate? Yes. Yes. Um, I want it to match what I'm feeling inside, if that makes sense. Mm. Because if I'm like, <laughs> I have like a guy who's also an FI user and like he, the tangible things he buys isn't worth anything. But when he explains to you why, it makes you look at the object differently. Like it'd be mm. like, oh, that makes sense now why you went for it and what the value of the object suddenly like it heightens. So like with me, I know there's like, there's a realistic quantity with me where, or quality with me where it's like, I don't want to buy you a useless item because it doesn't make sense in my head at least. Um, but at the same time, I also want to be able to match what gift I'm doing with what I'm feeling inside. Because if I don't do that, I can just like, it's almost like I just, I'm just projecting that I don't care. And mm-hmm. I don't want to have that because it's like, I don't just want to give you anything. Even if I bought, let's say I bought them a trip to like mm-hmm. some country. It'll be great, like funny, but it's just like, so, you know, it's just like, it, it didn't mean anything to me. Even if I dropped a couple thousand dollars, it doesn't mean anything to me. Whereas if I like invited them over, cooked them something that came from like, that took time in, blah, 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 blah. I took like in consideration all of their preferences into the dish. It's like, this is what I'm going to present. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's like playing it in my head all the time. Like FI, FI is really skilled at sort of assessing the value of said thing according to their own standard so you well fe might just be like the sort of free-flowing abundance of warmth and emotion maybe i'll cook for someone every day and like be like whatever it's like Mm -hmm. in order for me to maintain the amount of emotion that i freely give i can't be as focused on each one like the amount of effort that an FI user will put into things. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't want to make FE sound shallow because there already is that stereotype, but it's kind of just nothing to me. I mean, like, I, I have so much to give that I'm not really, like, monitoring, like, what... It's, it's a brewing thing, I think. It's like a brewing yeah. um, uh, what's What's the word? Like, it's... Because it's your dominant also. Like, it's a dominant FE, yeah. right? Yeah, so I think like, IFJs might be more likely to, like, put a lot of thought into... I would, I would agree, too. Um, I think so, it's... And not that I, I never would. It's just I'm coming at it from a different yeah. energy. I remembered... Um, shoot, who said it? I think Jamila, like, Denzel's wife. Mm-hmm. Um, she said, like, about introverted functions. Or maybe her FI just in specific. I'm not sure the exact quote. But she mentioned how, for her, as, like, let's say, as an introvert, it's all about, like, who would want to have my cookie raw when I could bake it and you can enjoy it done, you know, and you could like, why not wait till it's baked and finished and then you'll get to enjoy it for what it's worth. So I was like really intrigued That's by that FI, because yeah. it's a lot of time and like we shape it inside and then we like mold it and then we like you bring it out. Um, yeah. Which mm-hmm. is kind of funny because I would say, I don't know if you will feel like, feel this but it's just like when effie people like are nice to or show me or give me gifts or anything i like lose my like everything because it's like oh my goodness like you i treat it like it's the be- biggest thing in the world because for me i think that the person i'm talking to who i've already assigned an fi value is so high that when they give me anything it's like an insane like result like I my friend's like- always like shocked she's like oh, I just thought of you and I got you a sweater, you know? Like, I just thought of, like, I just saw something cute. It just says, yeah. you know, like, it's like a sheep or whatever. It's a llama, and we both watch llama. And, like, here you go. And I was like, oh, my gosh, thank you. I'm my best friend. Like, I just wild it out. Um, and she's like, oh, I didn't know you, you're so happy receiving gifts. And I'm like, no, it's because it's from you. Mm-hmm. And, like, I had that FI connection with you already. And this is, like, one of the most highest points for me to have that moment. I tend to feel awkward whenever I give a gift that has a lot of FI in it um, Mm. because I never want the other person to feel like obligated to smile or anything. Like I almost would rather not look at them when they see it. Like, I mean, that's why it's almost easier for me to like give things that I guess according to FE is expected or is like a baseline 
well yeah because like i feel christmas like or something kind of like yeah like you're like going out and you'd be like hey you like at a window shopping you'll notice i like this for you just thought of them yeah like, i'm like hey i thought of my girlfriend yeah like, i'll buy that for her on on christmas or whatever right like you'll just have that in your mind yeah like crystal my enfp friend from synchronic saturdays um she's like the only person that i feel like i have given like fi style gifts to in a way that it doesn't make me feel awkward because I know that she'll appreciate it or whatever. Like, cause she does tarot readings. And also when we were in college, like five times a week, she would like have the urge to go get gummy bears at like um, midnight or something. And so I found like the, the gummy bear tarot at some store. And I just was like, oh I, ha- my gosh. I, like I have to get this to her. And like, I just was like, what's your address? And I like mailed it to her as like a surprise. Like, I I don't like to do Dang. things like that because I tend to think that people will find it awkward or feel obligated as a response. But I mm-hmm. feel like that almost is like a more fi thing in a way. Like, you you I see, it, it could be. I mean, my friend got me a chocolate toilet, and I like lost my everything. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> She's like, I thought of you, and I'm like, oh my god! It's you. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, you thought of me? <laughs> it like I it's like has little to do with the object. Maybe it's maybe because I'm any, you know, like because mm, we're so mm-hmm. cute, it's like I'm thinking of the inference behind it. Mm-hmm. Like, oh you thought of me. And like it doesn't matter to me it was a chocolate toilet. I thought it was a great joke. Like mm-hmm. it's just like because we always like talk about like poop jokes or whatever. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, it's <laughs> great. So I need I think I want to move on to some of these other questions. Awesome. Yeah. And uh so i have another question and if if just try your best to answer it as you would and i won't interrupt you is as opposed to a typical day describe an ideal day like what would you love to spend your time doing if you had all of the resources in the world so try <laughs> and not try and not think like super practically but like oh like what is your soul on. desire to do i think just to not worry about like the routine to have that kind of be done with if i don't have to think about it i feel like that would have been ideal already like if it's just automatic for me and i don't have to expand mental energy on that because like so much of my day is put in to take care of my si needs because like i know i crave it and i know that if i don't do it i won't be like successful in a sense um But at the same time, I'm missing out on, like, a good number of fine, yeah, like, just fine stuff that I would probably, I would prefer to be doing. Like, so let's say your SI needs are met, or you have enough money in your bank account to not worry about that. What would you do with your day? Like, I have, like, I have this weird, like, this dream, like, I have, like, a Mm -hmm. couple dreams where, like, I would rather be having like owning a bed and breakfast in like south of france with my wife and then like i'd be painting you know the entire <laughs> like i'd be painting i have a studio in the basement where i'd like present stuff and then she'd handle like you know the upstairs Your istj team. wife would but istj wife would probably be handling it <laughs> and then like we'd spend like the afternoon just like having wine by the freaking coast and just like <laughs> like it's so good and every time i think about it i'm like ah. <laughs> why am I oh single? My God. <laughs> why oh is my this God. a thing? It's funny. Um, like you want someone to do the managing and to probably do the accounting and like. <laughs> what's crazy though is I taught myself all of that. So yeah, to make can, sure that you're. I can do it. It's mm-hmm. just that because I'm doing that, I can't do the painting. You know, uh, in yeah. the basement. It's the cost I have to deal with. You know, like everything yeah. is a cost for me. Like I can't just pursue that dream because I don't I have to take care of that stuff mm-hmm. I can't just do it um which is okay like I'm not gonna I'm not like ee, cry about it because like I don't have my dreams um yeah. obviously I can get it it's just it's gonna take time um but it's just like I also have another one where it's like why not I also had this dream where like why couldn't I just have a regular sorry maybe that's not the right word um have a creative career you know mm-hmm. and like pursue that maybe once or twice a week so that I can like pursue my energy traveling and like mm. see you know all that kind of like stuff. working like had, on your podcast and stuff working on the podcast more and like um getting to interview people 
you know, getting to the nitty gritties of everybody. Like, there's this thing I used to, I follow Humans of New York a lot. Mm -hmm. Not because I cared about anything. It's just more like I like learning about people. Honestly, Humans of New York is extremely NFP, in my opinion. Because I think that in order to go, you have to go up to someone like that ask a question and get them to tell you something interesting about their story and then pick out some sort of FI, SI detail that you can caption it, you know? I think, okay, this is probably, this is going to get the NFP in a second, but I was like, mm-hmm. I treat it like an honor. Like it's so, I feel like it's such an honor to hear someone else's story, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Like I put mm-hmm. so much like value in it. So when a person's mm-hmm. like vulnerable, a person tells me their day, it's like I've been felt like I've been given permission mm. to like look inside their mind. Um, and I have this belief where it's like the, the bigger stories are the things we do not know. Like the bigger stories are the things that people don't talk about. Like we have great stories. They're written by victors in history, like whatever. But what about the lives that also go around you know the struggles the things that other people Mm. are doing to get through their day um it it doesn't even have to be insane it can be like a normal mundane and i think this is like idealizing the si of it all like it's just Mm. knowing that it's that it exists and caring about that like see if i had the time (laughs) i'm only with you because an nfj is like bringing it out of me i don't think about this all the time actually this isn't Mm. something i I thought I i think about and like ponder of but it's like given the whole question of what is my ideal day? I would want to be able to engage with people like that. I want to be able to like sit and take it and immerse myself if I had all the resources in the world um, and the time in the world to just make it happen. I could lose, yeah. I can finally lose myself if that makes sense. Hmm. Do you, Okay, so about how often in an ideal day would you consider wanting to talk with and collaborate with people versus how much would you want oh, to be gosh, decompressing? Oh the Every, entire time, probably. The entire time. I would want to be like, I could be quiet for an entire day listening to a person babble about who they are and mm. how they came to be. Because it's so like... you don't necessarily feel like, okay, I'm overwhelmed with people now. Oh, like, gosh, go. no. Okay. No, no. Overwhelm is good. <laughs> 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 the more, the more. Like, I, It's a weird kind of thing where the excess is fantastic because it's like... Um, I don't know. Like, I don't sit and process it. Maybe if I talk to an NFJ, you know, at the end of the week, and I'd be like, "Oh, let me tell you, like, what I processed." I don't do that in the moment. I don't guess I care. So it sounds to me like you want your SI needs to be taken care of because your NE desires to lose yourself in the story mm-hmm. behind the people. Mm-hmm. Like the the fact that you said "lose yourself" stuck out to me because. I almost think of EPs as sort of wanting to do this trust fall with the universe. Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, coming from a guy who lose yourself. I don't. Cause the thing is, I don't want, like, um, I'm an SP dom in like, Mm. uh, in Enneagram. Like I dislike the whole idea of putting everything in one basket. Like the whole concept of all or nothing is weird to me. Well, what is, what is the, um, what did you mean by saying lose yourself then? It's, I guess, just finally experience what it feels like to be in the moment. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that feels like. Um, people, like, look at me weird. They're like, oh, my goodness, what? NFPs can know what it is to feel in the moment. And I could probably agree, like, to some extent. But, like, I, at the same time, I don't. Because it's like, what do we do? You know, like, I'm right now in this moment, but I'm thinking of what if. That's not something I can turn yeah, off. Yeah. And, and that's not think- living in the moment. Like, <laughs> Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, because it's it's – not it's not valued se also at the same quick question time, mm-hmm. is it even really living am i even re- living is like go oh, philosophy on that it's just kind of like i don't know how about other mps feel about it but like am i actually living if i don't know what it feels like that's reminds me of there's some popular quote that i can't even remember who it's by or whatever or how it goes but it's something like the rarest thing is to live or something Mm. to live is the rarest thing a human can do or something like that i think it's why i value a lot of se advice Uh because it's it's so off world for me like it's so off brand (laughs) like i just i don't know what it what is like you know you you see the advertisement take you know carpe dm like take it make it happen i'm kind of like cool like okay (laughs) well what would you say like so 
someone could argue that you are an SP if you value in an ideal day being able to be in the moment, but that's that's not true. Um, no, you val- I'm, I'm you value it if it was. You value it because you. It seems to me like NFPs. Okay, like you guys have this baby STJ underneath it all. That const like the STJ like the the TE and SI part of you knows you know that time is limited, money's limited. Like you've said before, that you're very much like I'm going to focus on myself and my career, and then later I'm going to focus on finding a wife. Like you're very like segmented of like. Mm-hmm. Um, like yeah. you, you have that practical side that it's like, yes, ENFPs can be very carefree and everything, but also you're not stupid. Like, you know that there's only so much time in the day and like, you're trying to live each day to the fullest, but you can't literally do what you, your FI wants at all times. And like your TE is available for you to like, sort of see the trade-offs and situations. Right. Mm-hmm. Plus, I mean, yeah. when you're delusional like a seven, you just don't really, like, think about regret. you just kind of like, oh, well, at least there's tomorrow. <laughs> so Okay, okay. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> and also, why why the bed and bre- breakfast? Like, it almost, that also seems kind of an E. Oddly specific. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's almost like you want to see, to, to me, I get from that, that you desire to sort of see people in transient moments of their life just for a moment and to sort of watch them all go by like right like yeah it's a kind of like a a weird voyeuristic expense like it's just i want to be there serving them in the morning as a morning person i also Mm want to be there when they're enjoying the sunset if Mm. that makes sense um like i I don't like there's a dream of mine too where i was like oh what if i was just on an island and then like everything's great because i don't have to deal with people but at the end of the day i don't want to be isolated you know like i don't want to be so separate from people like i i don't get like that concept it's just like I, as much as i want to like breaks are great but not to live in like yeah. i don't like that which by the way i am all or nothing and i am sp blind and i actually really don't like customer service or helping lots of people because um it's like teasing me in a way of like oh they're so close yet so far like i don't know their souls or anything like mm. i don't care like i don't like to really be super surface level like that. And like, not that it is surface level because it, it's your NE's imagining things, you know, I think it's probably why I enjoy small talk. Cause like, it's yeah. not in the sense that I'm dealing with the details I'm dealing with. Like I'm, I have that background NE telling me that this is meaning something. Mm-hmm. So I'm enjoying it for what it is. Um, just making me think. Yeah. Like, ah, yeah. This also reminds me of this INFP guy I knew in college always would say that if he was homeless for whatever reason, he would try and save up for a plane ticket, a one-way plane ticket to Hawaii, and he would be a homeless person that lives on the beach and would just eat, like, the scraps that kids leave over. (laughs) I'm just imagining, okay, I'm really imagining an SP blind, like, NP. Like, I'm just going, like, dude, <laughs> like, I get it. Like, I want what you want, too. But I'm like, no, <laughs> no, honey, no. <laughs> you don't have to be homeless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think he, just, he probably wanted, like, the like the freedom of it or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm like, with no, sorry, no instruments. Like, you can't even, like, get money out of it. I'm like, no. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, like, my SB kicked in. I'm like, but what about the fine wine? <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> the good food. Like, I don't want to just look at a sunset. I want to eat, like, <laughs> three-course meals. Like, are you oh, my sick? God. <laughs> okay, so I feel like, okay, there's a couple. There's two more questions I want to ask, but I, okay. I want to make sure that we don't talk for too much longer to be respectful of your time. Oh, that's fine. We so, still have time. Okay. Describe the biggest point of self-growth for you and what was that turning point? Walk me through this journey of the biggest struggle or one of the biggest struggles. I apologize okay. for how NI that question is. No, no, no. I got it. <laughs> it's just that I have 
I have to really think about how like I'm gonna word that out because gotcha. I think one of the biggest highlights or the biggest ones that I had to go work through was like having reality thrown in my face. Mm-hmm. Now that's like the theme. I actually can get down to specifics with that because mm-hmm. like I'm gonna use enneagram on this case because it was kind of the word the jargon in that system makes mm-hmm. more sense because like sevens go through a period where they have a fall from grace moment where they think like everything's great, everything is fun and optimistic until it finally they have no way out. Like it hits so bad. Um, they actually have to like deal with the negative. you're back into a corner? Yeah, you're back in a corner and there really isn't any, like there isn't any extroverted intuition way of thinking of dreaming an alternative. And it happened when I broke up with um, a girl that it was so, it was so weird because it was like, were we dating? Were we not dating? It was very like up in the air, but it was clear that we've been spending too much time together and it's been like, and then I was staying with this person for like five years um, and everything was great. That's my seven telling you that everything was great, but everything wasn't great. Yeah. So yeah that's, 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 seven, that's like the growth already in me to tell you it wasn't great. Um, I regret certain things in that, in that time that I probably should have been way more realistic. So would with. you say you were seeing the silver lining of the situation, but not really thinking about the consequences? I was focusing on the potential. Exactly. I was yeah. focusing on the potential, what it could be. I thought it was going to be forever. Mm-hmm. I thought there was an eventuality with this um, gig, but there wasn't. You know, it was, um, it was like, I want to say it was a lie. It was just, we deceived each other. We deceived ourselves and then deceived each other, basically. Because I wasn't the only, mm-hmm. like, she wasn't the only one in the wrong here. Like, I, I did my own gig. That was probably really wrong as well. And I was doing all the bad behaviors of an ENFP at the same time. Which, um, could you elaborate a little more on what that means what my bad behaviors were well and you don't um, you don't have to if you don't feel comfortable but like what do you what do you mean what do you mean by the bad behaviors of an enfp i'm flighty like super flighty so like when we would make plans i'd be like "Ah, i don't know and i'll be like in that moment have like a hesitation and then not follow through ever and that person was an intj so you know kick in that kind of an ij versus an ep Mm -hmm. um and at the same time, she used me to get into social situations because mm-hmm. she didn't have that. I'm not saying that all IJs have that. Actually, that's not what I'm saying at all. It's just that I'm... I, because I don't want to name drop the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what she was doing to me. And I, would, on the other hand, were using her to, like, learn and, like, grow up things. So I, we were both using each other for all the wrong reasons. Um, and there wasn't any kind mm-hmm. of... And the thing is, is we didn't know. Like, we thought that that was how friendships work. It was like transactional like that. Oh, like your FI can see, both of you guys, your FI can see how you can benefit from the other, but you weren't really focused on like the emotion like between actually, the two. Yeah, like what it actually meant. I mean, I'm SX blind, so I'm not even like looking into that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't think that it was important until it finally hit me where we didn't have the same vision. We didn't have the same direction in mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. Um, she wanted something else and I wanted something else. And it came to the point where there was no way we could compromise anymore because yeah. if we did it, it would cost us something we cared about. Um, yeah. Like, and the thing is, is it wasn't just emotion or whatever. Like it was time and energy. Like I, there's so much of that was being put into it um, that it also felt like for me as a person who likes to invest, it was like, oh no, I put so much time in this. I spent five years into this. Now I have to give it all away. Like I had to like scramble. And the thing is, is as I scrambled, seven put in a corner, realized it, the more time I delayed, which I also do, like I'm a procra- professional procrastinator, the more time I delayed, yeah. the worse it became. Um, That's something I've been thinking about lately that I feel like FI and TE users can stay in relationships too long because they want their investment to be worth it or they don't want to feel like they wasted time. Whereas... F-E-T-I might stay in relationship too long because they don't want to feel the person being sad or something like I, or Probably. It's like, well, cause yeah, I was talking to an INTJ about this recently and like, I know, I know I've known other ENFPs who have felt like you where they are like, um, Oh, that's a waste of time or like, which I, I don't mm. really, I don't really think about that. I, I mean, I think that every time I date someone new, I'm learning more about myself. I'm learning about them. I'm learning about people. I'm becoming more the person I was. And like, we loved for that time. And so not everything has to be like, this is what I'm going to invest in. Or like, to me, it seems like a lot of FITE users, it's like they think that they're every second you spend with the person, it's like you're putting a, 
uh, a quarter of your time or like you're investing little by little like in that person in that potential like future i don't know does that yeah. resonate with you it's funny because it's like i forgot to mention or add was that um i mentioned how i don't like to put everything in all in one basket um or all my eggs in one basket and it was in that moment with this person that i did that and it didn't go well mm, and it was like the time probably... i took like i took the risk you know as an sp dom like i went for it i'm like as an sx blind sp dom i went for it thinking this is going to be the one and it wasn't you know and like to compare to me as an enfj i put all my eggs in one basket i'm obsessed with I, I've been told that my, my mom's an ESFJ and she's told me my entire life, don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> and I'd be like, mom, but it's the right basket. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have that. And I may be like, I don't have yeah. it to like throw it in and trust it. You know, I don't, I don't have that notion. It was so weird because the aftermath, cause I had to make the decision. Like I was like, she even, she didn't even didn't think it. She thought that we could still fix it. I mean, she's a TE hmm. user, like higher TE. She thought that we could just fix it. And I said, no. We can't, we can't because we are bringing out each other's monsters to each other and we're no longer like compatible. I had to like be straight. I was like in tears. It was like a full on thing. And you didn't want to compromise your FI. I couldn't. And I was already like losing every, like I was like in that moment, I'm like this is going to be the moment. And after that, I recovering after, like we spent so much time building up with our FI to present to people. I put in more and then I had a deficit. I had like a debt mm. of emotional energy to pay. Mm. I literally, rec- like it was so weird. I went into, I rent, I became a recluse for about six months after that, which is so weird. My parents like have shocked because they were like this bubbly person decided he didn't want to talk to anybody. He didn't want to deal with anyone. I sat in darkness for like six mm. months and mm. contemplated suicide. You know, it was a deal. And the thing is, is people were like, oh, that sounds so dramatic. But the thing is, that's how I felt when you give everything in one place and you lost it and you don't have the SE or the, the silver lining hope because uh, all my any doors were shut down. So there wasn't even a tomorrow. So what was the point, right? My typical day became atypical, but routinely atypical. So every day became the same and every day became no hope. So I was like, what am I doing with myself? And I had to start over from the very beginning. Um, it's funny because thank you for sharing that because I feel like thank you so much for sharing that because I feel like a lot of a lot of NFPs are going to relate to that and feel less alone after having heard that what's crazy I don't know I mentioned this I mentioned this in the VC I think like many times before but it was like I after that six months and the thing is is I didn't even know it was going to be done in six I'm glad that it did Um, but I told myself how was it done did you just decide no yeah it was funny because it's like I was in the darkness again like mm-hmm. literally shut down all the lights, heavy blinds. Like I didn't want to, like, who cares if I starve to death? Like it was full on like opposite self. And then I told to myself, I was like, I was thinking for the first time and I was like, instead of just emotionally festering and I'm like, this isn't you. Like, who are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, yeah. Who are you? Like, you don't even know who you are anymore. You're just a shell, an empty husk of a person. And I was like, you need to kill this. This yeah. you need to go. Like, I'm sorry, but you need to go. That's and, NI, I think. And it's like, that, and then there was a voice inside that was going, no, like, that's not fair. Like, all of this are memories. All of this is like, you emotional stuff. I'm like, yeah, but you're killing us. Yeah. I was like, and like, there's another voice inside that was going like, yeah, but you're like literally hurting this body that we're inhabiting. Yeah. Like, people around, there are people out there who care, you know, yeah. like, are generally worried about your state. Like, I literally, having a full-on, emo- like, social collapse distance with everybody and it's like and then like a part of me was like oh it's so much work like I don't want to go through that whole like, you know raising social capital again and like reconnecting with people it's like you know you threw it all away for this person and then you're like yeah but you have to do it you're like what 19 like calm your like it's like I became like annoying again to myself I'm like you're not like calm down like <laughs> like how are you like this dramatic like this is yeah. not cool and it sounds crazy, but I was like, I had to kill myself to be myself or like to, to reborn. Mm. And it, yeah, it's, it's like you metaphor. let go of the person you once were. And, and you know, I feel like I, and the you, reason I think that might be you using NI is because I feel like I have moments like that frequently. Mm. Oh, where yeah, that, I'm it was a always, strange experience. <laughs> I'm always, I'm always killing my past self. Like, like, I don't know, all the time. I, do you ever have that moment? Because I had this moment, like the, the doubt that came in where 
so I killed it. Now I'm going to be me now, like whatever this me is going to be. But what if I feel fake? Kat mentioned it to mm. me. Uh, shout out to Kat. Like it's like having an imposter syndrome moment. Yeah. Because suddenly I'm going to be awesome now. You know, <laughs> for like a minute, like suddenly yeah. I'm going to be awesome now. But what's that going to do? You know, like you don't just like, yeah. for six months and come out and be like, hey, by the way, look at me. I'm amazing now. Well, Everyone's having like, the will to be that is the first step. And so yeah. actually, literally um, the other day, so actually, just to I'm I'm sharing this to sort of contrast contrast because a lot of people get ENFP ENFJ confused. But before I go into that, I just wanted to say that I cannot think of one time in my life where I have put all my eggs in one basket and it has ended poorly. So even mm. though people have told me to not put my eggs in one basket, my experience ha- hasn't taught me that I've done anything like wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, so. So that's interesting how maybe that was like more unnatural for you and then like you weren't able to handle sort of like the aftermath or whatever where in in hindsight like obviously now like being the person that I am now and looking back it's like oh well it was a lesson learned yeah yeah lesson learned it's an experience I was so naive though like there was and I think I sometimes I even still am kind of naive even now but like that time was kind of like it doesn't mean I can't do it you know, the thing I did learn, yeah. well, actually what I did take out of it was um, that I'm good at committing. Like, and the <laughs> I'm thing a committed is, person. Like, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the like, thing I ain't is, the one that's going to go off and fly around with anybody. I'm like, yeah. that's, that's who I am. It's just, I also have, I learned that I have to put, you know, put my foot down when situations, like I can't hold it in because I think a part Ooh. of my flaw. Oh, you were holding in your FI. You weren't communicating. I was, yeah, I was you. holding in generating like festering resentment and things and i realized that was not good like i'm burying all yeah. the negative energy but i'm not actually getting rid of it they're just piling inside i want to clarify too that i have been just as naive just as dramatic and i also have gone through a long period of darkness where i was just a shell but that experience would not have set me over the edge because mm. i have an eye and i would know it's a lesson. And I'm not trying to say that no NI user has ever been in your situation, Mm. but the way that our cognitive functions um, interpret things is very, it's very different. Um, Very, very different. Like I think part of it to add with myself was in that darkness, I had to force myself to open doors again. Yeah, like, to see the possibilities. It's yeah, because the like, NI was limiting to me, if that makes sense. Like, I knew yeah. I had to do change, but what kind of change? And then I was like, then I was actually finally NEing again. Like, I was generating ideas. I was like, oh my goodness, I could, I could make art out of this. I could do this out of this. I could, like, and I started making, going more and more, like, generating more and more. And that gave me hope. You know, like, that yeah. gave me, like, the light. Um, I don't know how other, like, I definitely don't think an NI user would, like, would prefer to open doors like a lot like open all of them (laughs) for example well so i was gonna say an example is that lately okay so lately i've been realizing that i am not being spontaneous enough and i'm not being light enough in my approach to life and it is making me feel really constricted Mm. and it's making me feel um like a lot of tension about like where i'm going Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's making me not it's not allowing me to enjoy the process or the journey at all because I have such intense clarity about where I'm going and my direction and I'm very grateful for that but yeah it also doesn't really matter because if I can't enjoy the process of getting there then I'm always going to be having more clarity and more paths and I sort of it just I was like well I need to figure out how to have fun like while I'm doing Mm. this because there is to some extent to some extent I am feeling very spread thin and that there there is some sort of se reality to the fact that I won't be happy until I've reached this place because this place is going to be healthier for me and I know I'm Mm -hmm. getting there Mm -hmm. but the I I need to change my mentality now or else by the time I'm there I'll have the same mentality and so like I I sort of observe these things all the time, but something just recently as an example is that I sort of was like, you know what? I'm fucking done with not waking up early enough. I'm I'm done with not meditating every day. Like I've done it before. Like I Mm. need to give myself peace now. 
if I'm not making mm -hmm. time for peace now, when I get busier, I'm not going to make time for peace. Like, I think that I will. I think that when I have more time and resources that I will give myself time. Uh, but I need to schedule peace in my day every day. I can't just like think, oh, well, I'll fill that in in the gaps. And so pretty much like I was thinking about that last weekend and then I sort of woke up like, fuck this. And I meditated every day for like a week. But like I do like little changes like that where I, mm -hmm. I reach this sort of wall where I'm like, fuck that. And then I just like change. Like, and I, I always am doing that. Like, I mean, for example, like my my girlfriend yesterday, like what we we're in this routine where like on the weekends we just um I don't know, like most people sleep in on the weekends, but the fact is that we have like a lot of pro personal projects we're doing that don't mm. really allow us to sleep in that much. Mm -hmm. So it's like mm -hmm. we were planning on waking up somewhat early and we were in bed till 10 and she was feeling sorry for herself. And I just like jumped on the bed and I was like, come on, we're doing yoga. Come on. <laughs> I was just like, get the fuck up. Like, let's just not even think about it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And I, that's not a normal for me. That was like me sort of entering a new state. Um, I love how it's just like an SC had to kick in at some point, right? Yeah. And I it think had that, to go. Like, <laughs> like what you describe, it's almost like allowing yourself to enter a new state of being behind like, what you're doing and I think as an NI user I do this incrementally all the time like I, I I don't often get to the point where I'm completely not myself and then all of a sudden I am or something like mm -hmm. it's like it's like I'm constantly unloading the unpacking the different parts of myself that aren't really me until I get to my higher self that's it's crazy because like, it's like um yeah. I don't think I see it in the same sense because mm -hmm. like when I had to do that whole myself thing, it I had to grieve for that loss. I felt I, that it was a person. <laughs> yeah. So this is how I grieve. So I mean, for example, the longest relationship I had that ended, um, two weeks later, I was like texting someone and like distracting myself, like mm. after like a year. Mm -hmm. Um I wasn't ready to jump into anything new, but like, I, it probably wasn't the best choice for me to do, but like, I, I gave myself two weeks to grieve like a one year relationship. And I needed to show myself that there were other possibilities so that I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that I was going to go after them and I didn't, but I, I wanted to be single for longer, but I like um, needed to remind myself there's more out there or else I was going to completely go off the deep end. And mm. also I feel like the main way that I grieve is like as certain events come up in my life, I interpret them with NI, what does this mean? And I feel like naturally through living life, um, mm -hmm. I will be reminded to unpack things in the past because that's what always happens. Like I'll like watch something or hear a song and it'll like, remind me of like an ex or something but it's not like me getting into si mode of replaying it's just like mm -hmm. oh i bet they lost respect for me because of this okay that makes me help like get rid of some of my resentment and it's like i don't know if that makes, makes that's sense. so fascinating because <laughs> i guess the only way i ever agree was through fi like it was or maybe mm -hmm. si too like i yeah dang girl i repeated a song for like the full 30 days of a <laughs> month like i went and it was like <sighs> yeah i see, don't know yeah. like maybe crystal can get this like from me like we'll mm -hmm. understand like what that feels like because it's like i repeated the sensation mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i'm holding on to a moment that had passed and i feel guilty for going forward but the guilt is I feel is necessary because once I'm done with this guilt, it's done. Like it's gone. We've dealt yeah, with it. Yeah, it really We've is. Worked with it. I mean, and like it, I, yeah, like I look back now. I can talk to this person again. By the way, like it's no mm -hmm. problem. Like I've made the peace. Everything is like fantastic. Like this person, and I think is I can even compliment them. Like this person hmm. is a very productive member of like you know of her own like gig. She does like she's super busy she's an intj like what are you gonna like what else do you got you know, right that's so funny that i actually feel like that <laughs> process is probably really important for an enfp because for example the guy that i dated 
for a year was an ENFP and mm. he, he called me, he was trying to talk to me for like two whole months after, cause he kept saying he needed more, re, he needed more explanation. Like mm. he, he was blindsided by why I broke up with him, even mm. though I saw all the NI leading to it. Yeah. Cause I, the way I broke up with him was because I was thinking about it for a while. And then he said something like, man, I just really see our life together or something. And I just said, I can't say that I see that. And he was like, wait, what? Cause I like saw it last week or something. And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't sit here and say, I see it. Like, I was like, sorry, I wasn't planning on breaking up with you, but. Right but you now, can't lie like, either. Yeah. Like, you're yeah, not going to lie about lie. it. I couldn't lie. It's like, if it goes like, I see us together and they, obviously the answer is going to be like, well, what if I don't see this? Yeah. Thing? Like, like I, what's and the, I, I couldn't have a poker face about it either. Like I just knew. Yeah. And then, so mm-hmm. then I sort of realized like, yeah, I should just end this now. Like, and so I ended it then and I, I gave like three months or not three months. I gave like three full hours of explaining it. And then I, I left. Went from three months to three hours, girl. <laughs> like <laughs> like that, uh, that's a big time gap. <laughs> I gave, I like sat there for like three or four hours explaining it. And then I was like, I have to go. Like he kept asking me questions about why. And I was like, I can't explain this. Man, trying to ask it. And I users are like, by the way, can you tell me everything in an SI detail? And then he, no, yeah, no, but he, <laughs> kept calling, he kept calling me with like very specific questions and be like, when you said this one thing, like back then, like, did you mean this? Or were you lying then? And I'm just like, oh my God. Like he needed to but piece that, everything together. And I had to eventually That's crazy because it's like, you weren't lying though. Like, I, I don't yeah. know. Like, maybe, maybe that's how my experience with Essie has worked out really good, at least nowadays. He was because very, like, like, not in a great place because okay. he like, was kind of threatening to kill himself. Oh. So well. I, so, but I guess the <laughs> point, the point of why I was, <laughs> the point of why I was it's like, well, that, honey, that's some dark. <laughs> well, yeah. The point of why I'm even saying this is because, well, one, that was really hard for me as an Enneagram two to know when to say no, when to, when to say, gotcha. I'm yeah. done explaining to you. But I think that process, like the dark night of the soul or whatever is like important for ENFPs because he's also my only ex that I have zero resentment about and I totally have I I it's just like whatever. And Sorry, he like, um when I drank this coffee it had like coffee grounds in the bottom. <laughs> so when I added that I was like I'm like trying like I don't know if I'm giving you the FP <laughs> emotion you need to see. Oh my god that's because <laughs> I'm yeah, like my face is like fine. It's just bitter. Oh, I'm not man, I'm not fine. into this. And then you're like, and then you're probably gonna react accordingly, like, oh yeah, like you're telling me a sad story. I'm like, no, no, this is unrelated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm having an unrelated but, attack right now. <laughs> oh no, it's fine. But but okay, pretty much continue. two or three years later, I he's able to say, Oh yeah, you were completely right. I was completely fucked up. Like, mm. like now now he's able to say, Oh yeah, I needed that. Like you totally just sucker punched me and like into mm. being myself like he's like completely no hard feelings at all like but i i could i feel like that sort of darkness or whatever like he processed it all where mm. people who don't value fi like might not process it but like i think you're right that like once you're done grieving like you're done grieving like it's actually fine like like i if i were to bump into him it would be like no big deal but yeah. like for example my ntp exes they will never <laughs> they will never be over me like sorry if you're watching this but it's like they just won't because they aren't <laughs> processing it <laughs> like <laughs> you will never be over me honey. they won't be <laughs> but they won't ever be over anything in my eyes like it's really confusing Damn. To me. um that's <laughs> okay. no it's, it's funny because it's like um back to the how we make peace with like our grieving or whatever um, I mentioned this as a disclaimer now for like a lot of my friends. When yeah. I am emotionally compromised, I like to say emotionally compromised because like it takes over and I'm not thinking straight. Because I think it's a biological thing too. Like your mm-hmm. your thinking functions like shut down when you're feeling certain emotions. Um, mm-hmm. It's like when you're in love, your prefrontal cortex just like mm-hmm. you know something like that. I don't know if it's real. Um, well, I I read about it. Uh, I can't mm-hmm. elaborate on it because you know I ain't no scientist, but that's kind of what I from what I understand. So I get. So I'm drawing my conclusions or hypothesis is the fact that because I know that some parts of my brain will shut down, like logical mm. side of me will not be functioning as optimal as they should be. Um, 
that don't trust me making decisions in that moment. It's like, I'm mm. feeling something right now. We need to let this pass. Um, so usually like when my friends, like I have an ESCP friend, right? So he's like mm -hmm. with Polar FI, he's not going to care. Like it's, it's not that it's his fault or anything, but he's not going to be like, okay, well, why do you feel? Like just stop feeling and go. But the thing is, is I'm not in the state of mind to make a decision because I'm compromised. If I went in and did the SC or meant for it, I'm going to cause disaster. Like I'm going to be the type of person that gets into a car accident because I'm distracted. Like I'm gone. So I was like, somebody else has to take the helms for now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like, I tell them oh. to like, whenever I'm emotionally compromised, I'm like, I'm emotionally compromised right now. Um, whatever decision you guys want, I'm going to go along with it. If I have any kind of like, you know, blowback or like retreat or retract anything, I will explain it to you later. Like that I will be able to. The whole idea like, of being emotionally compromised is interesting to me because I don't <laughs> really. <to it. laughs> yeah. So like, and my friends are, none of them are FI users except for like the one, some of them, but then they don't function well, FI like I do. I wonder how much of that is SI because my ESFJ sister, whenever she was going through a breakup with like her high school sweetheart of like three years, she definitely had mm -hmm. like this period where she was just replaying everything Oh, um, that as an ESFJ. Right. Oh my goodness. So, that, you have a point there because my uh -huh. friend, when things went down, she starved herself for three days. I was so pissed off. Like I was so angry because yeah, it was like your ESFJ I, friend yeah, yeah. I, w I was so angry and like the thing is is she needed to process it to get over it and she's fine now yeah but yeah. it's just like that thought of cutting yourself off like if you having been there I guess it's like I can't I don't ever want to wish that on anyone you know like I don't yeah. not on not on my friends like not on, like, I, the last thing I want is my friend to lose the same way I lost in a sense like Interesting. So I think my sister as an ESFJ, I think when you cut an SJ off to a new reality, they have a hard time adjusting to it. It's like, ha huh, ha, huh, where am I? Like sort of like SI needs to get like a person in a foreign in. language, like country and not knowing. Yeah, what's going it's on. so yeah. funny. You say you don't want people to go through that because um, I think you have to. Like yeah. I think everybody will. And it's really funny being raised by an ESFJ and an ENFJ is that when things would happen, like if I was bullied at, or like if I was rejected by a crush or something, my ESFJ mom would be like, oh no, and like empathize with it. And my dad as an ENFJ was like, that's life. <laughs> like that's Just get life. Up and, go. <laughs> and, and, and he would sort of be more hands off of like, she's going through the process of becoming an adolescent. Like this is like, my dad would reassure me by being like, hey, everyone goes through this. Like this is just like, like you're going through this, like it's just like this tunnel and you're going to come mm -hmm. out the other side. But like, I think, you know, I don't know if SI like wants to believe or, or maybe it's just painful because you relive your own experience when you're seeing that or um, I don't know. No, because we're, we just lack the NI, I think. We just lack oh, okay. the other side. I think it's oh. a lot. It's, it's the absence of Realizing um, the, another else. introverted perception because it's like, like for me, like with the absence of NI for myself as an NE dom, it's like, I don't know when to close doors or when it's okay to shut down and when it's okay to have a conclusion. Um, probably the same thing with like having an opposite. I know when it's time to close doors. I just yeah. have trouble with the unknown sometimes. I can even go so far as to even like for T, E and T, I, you know, like I don't know when to critically think or like to trust my thinking. I'd rather trust what works or what's useful to me. Um, mm -hmm. it's difficult for me to like sit and, you know, simmer a thought or an idea, um, unless I'm going to use it, mm -hmm. you know, unless it has some form of immediate application for myself or the immediate application in the future. If I see that investment, I can make that logic happen. But if I don't have it like that at all, like just sitting there thinking, it's like, mm -hmm. what am I doing? Like, why am I here? <laughs> no, we're not going to go into that. Like, it's just <laughs> yeah. So I feel like we've done a pretty good job. I have to get going. I feel like we've done a pretty good job of illustrating both your NE and FI through your personal examples. So mm -hmm. is, to end this, is there any, and honestly, this could be a whole other video sometime, but mm. is there any, I guess, advice or like sort of takeaway for growing into a higher version of an ENFP or like like any advice for if you are an ENFP or because I know we've talked a lot about how it's important to be typed correctly 
And to mm. know, for example, if you're an ENFP or an ENFJ, because mm -hmm. the path to growth for an ENFP looks very different yes. than for an ENFJ. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if you had sort of like a... Um, I think with mine, I don't, it depends on like other NFPs out there, I guess. But like there isn't, I don't know. It's like, don't have a lot, like it doesn't make sense for us to have goals, if that makes sense. Like it doesn't make sense for us to try to plan out our lives with the clarity that I would say that an NNI user would have really good yeah. at. Um, it's to never let go of that any ability of just our capacity to open more doors. Because when I was in that period of no progress, I needed, it was any that got me out, mm, you know, mm, trusting mm. my dominant function again to push myself forward. Even if, you know, the folks around me are going to be like, oh, well, you don't have a direction in life. You're not doing this. You're not doing anything. But the thing is, is like, that's technically not true, you know, on mm -hmm. a, actually, it's, it's more like technically, yeah, sure. It is kind of true. I don't have direction going on. But you don't but need it. I don't need it. You know, like, why is it that my life had to be planned out when I could, when my whole deal is exploring, my whole goal is to amass yeah. as much resources as I can. So if I can, you know, like right now, like I, so okay, maybe it's going to sound like crazy, but like I can do anything, you know, like I have proven that to myself. I can do anything. It just needs time. So it doesn't matter to me the goals that make sense because I will eventually make it happen. So it's just kind of like mm. um, the growth for an ENFP is to believe that that's possible. I think we, we put so much limits on ourselves depending on how we are raised also, like external circumstances maybe could come into play, but never like always believing that there is a tomorrow and that tomorrow breeds more tomorrows is yeah. something that we cannot forget as an ENFP. That is interesting. You said that because I've been thinking for a while, I don't know if this is just overly subjective, but in my opinion, I think hope is like the cornerstone of like what can make or break an ENFP. Like ENFPs can be the people that have hope when nobody else does, or they can be the people that don't have hope and mm. completely swallow themselves. And I think that if you have hope, then like you're good. Like, it's funny because it's like, I don't, anything. I don't intend to sound inspirational or anything. Like yeah. I actually don't care to like, if it inspires you, go for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to like, Oh my goodness, you have to feel it. Like, no, don't feel it. You don't have to. What, what's to feel? What's the emo? Like, I'm not an FE user. I'm not going to like <laughs> care about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure that you are not limiting yourself. You yeah. know, like there are, the options are limitless to a mind of an ENFP. Um, mm -hmm. People are going to criticize me for not having enough SE to make those ideas happen. But at the same time, I'm not swimming in the world of SE. You know, I will get hurt if I do so. Something so gotta, will happen though, because you have <laughs> enough ideas that one of them is bound to happen. One of them is bound to happen. Although, I mean, I also, also understand like the realistic component. You know, we can't just, you know, dream without any yeah. kind of value. So I get that part. But I mean, it's just that mm -hmm. thing where it's like, I'm not here to push you to like inspire you. I'm just here to tell you that, hey, options exist. You mm -hmm. know, like alternatives exist. Don't yeah. be like, don't let yourself down thinking that, oh, well, I don't know what to do tomorrow. That's the point that you don't know what you're doing tomorrow. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And see, that's the thing is we literally have the opposite problem because I know exactly when the time is the right time to open doors or to shut doors. But what is hard for me is what is on the other side of that door? How do I embrace the uncertainty of things? And so that's mm -hmm. why I will try so hard to like gain clarity. But at the end of the day, despite how clear, how clear my vision might be, I don't literally know the specifics. Mm. Like my NI knows the path, but I don't know the obstacles along the way. I don't know the actual situational way that what I want is going to happen. Yeah. Um, it's like, I don't think people realize how vague <laughs> NI is, or maybe they do. It's <laughs> how like, subjective I'll, NI is. <laughs> or it's like, I'll say, I know that there will be love in my life or something. And mm. I don't know how it's going to, like, I, I don't know the how, like, I don't care to know the how. Mm. It's like, like how it, 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 the same can be argued with any, it's like, how do you know there's always going to be a tomorrow, right? It's like, yeah. if any, like anybody criticizes us, it's, it's a valid criticism. Like it's a valid to ask us how, because we're not giving that information. We actually don't even are thinking of the information. Like I'm not thinking of the how I'm going to have a tomorrow. I'm not thinking the why, but all I know is that I know that, there is emptiness to be filled tomorrow. And for you, it would say, you know, when things are going to kick in, 
but you're not it's not like yeah. you're gonna be like how it's gonna kick in it's like, just because example, it's ni like i know that i am on earth to be like a voice i feel like i'm like a mouthpiece where mm. like i am tuned into the collective and i can share things that might be useful to people at uh, opportune times because yeah. i am inspired at the right time to say something at the time where people need to hear it mm-hmm. and i mm-hmm. just go with that flow and i'm good at you know and i also enjoy helping people put their voice out there and moving people in the direction of their destiny uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i know that i have no clue what that's going to look like in like the physical tangible manifestation and i also mm. don't care because i know like my purpose and my vision like i don't care if it's december or january that i you know you know what i mean like i i feel like sometimes what's crazy is um is this a big, have like five year plans yeah like this is a good example yeah. of like nj's like you guys don't plan no, like that. i don't like, don't plan in that sense like you don't like sit there and be like so <laughs> you know, you know yeah. i'm gonna do this and this is what's gonna happen it's so reactive to the moment like if you say i'm gonna find love this year you're going to be, your S is going to be continually aware of all your little situations in that year. You will eventually, because it's like you, yeah. ma- like in my mind and in any mind, I'm going to explain it from my axis. It's like you're maximizing possibilities by existing. Yeah. So for like example, like putting your existence out there kind of thing. This video that we're doing, mm-hmm. I, I think it's turning out really well. And I thought of this idea like last week. And but now in my mind, while we're talking, I'm thinking like, okay, now I need to find a lab rat of each type so that I can do a video like this. And this is gonna be a new series, and I'm gonna do like blah blah blah. I, I'm just like, um, but I didn't plan this mm. at all. But like, I know yeah. that I, it's like I am demonstrating what my NI and FE is good at in this video. And so it's like I know what I'm good at. I know where I'm going. But like the actual okay. Yeah, it's like because I use SE and not SI. So it's like when the SE moment comes, I can know what to do with it by um, using my NI to like discern it. It's like, you said you wanted to make a video. And so my NI was like, what could be a good video? And I'm like, oh, well, I also want to sort of demonstrate to people more often like what I offer in my services just in case. Mm. And so... For example, like if you want to be typed and if you like the amount of depth that I'm giving Nate, like this is the sort of depth that you might expect if you were to purchase that. And so like I'm thinking like, oh, I want to continue to do this. And so whenever this shows up as like an opportunity, it gives me like the NI uh, flash of insight of a way to use this opportunity for my Mm -hmm. purpose. But I didn't um, plan it. Yeah, you don't sit around scheming. Oh, (laughs) I'm going to eventually create this. That's my realm, okay? Yeah. (laughs) I want to, like, let people know, like, that's my realm of the scheming and the plotting. Like, yeah, I'm I'm the one generating the ideas and, like, thinking how they're all going to fit within, like, a week. And then I'll, like, make it happen. Like, I don't know. Like, I have to put all this thought in because I can't track that intuition of time. I can't do that. And, like, now that I'm in the moment and in the flow of this video, it makes it more clear how Mm -hmm. i can do more videos like this and it like people coming into my mind of people who might be interested in being interviewed it's like um then all of a sudden i have the inspiration to reach out to people Uh, you know what i mean it's like but i i only get that from interacting with the se of wanting to do a video well, no, because it's funny because it's like we're also, not disagreeing, sorry, but mm-hmm. it's, we are both extroverted dominant functions. We have to react to whatever yeah. is out there. Yeah. Like, I think people forget that we are reacting as ease, if that makes sense. Because yes. it's like, um, I think people assume that because we, like, you know, because you have NI that we have to, you have to do this. I'm like, no, no, we forget their dominant function is forcing them to go out first. Well, like, yeah. my, I'm reacting to possibilities first. If I have to sit down and take every FI, it's going to exhaust me. That's well, not I've my life. Well, I've also noticed that <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of introverts that are into typology will, like, read a lot or study a lot or think a lot and then sort of be like, okay, guys, this is what I thought. Or, like, you and I and, like, Kat or, like, Crystal or other, like, mm-hmm. especially ENFs we all have like a theory and I won't think about it. I'll message you. You have, you have to talk over like, it. I, I, like, 
I talk it through and mm. I don't really write anything down. Like honestly, the reason I started my YouTube channel is so that I at least know that if I say something, <laughs> it's recorded somewhere. I don't know. Like <laughs> that's so, it's funny because it's smart. I get it's yeah. clever. I think people can like think of it as like, oh, she must be rehearsing. I'm like, no, this girl, this girl doesn't rehearse. <laughs> no, I don't rehearse. Like. Well, actually, I was born to be on stage. I, See, like, I, isn't it first... funny how SE can come off like that? Like, people are going to be like, oh, my goodness, like, you look like it's so natural. I'm like, you forget that there are people in the world who respond to this kind of environment better. Somebody you know, like, commented is, you know, recently, like... <laughs> somebody commented and said, you're either a very confident girl or you recorded this video 10 times or something. And, and I just want to, like, I was like, should I tell them that I'm confident? I don't know. Like, I, I never, well, like, that you're kind of either or? It's not that, well, you're neither or, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, it's not that you're, it's because you're confident you went for it. It's because you had something else going on and you needed to get it out. And so, also, was, yeah. <laughs> everybody has different aspects of life that are more scary for them. Like, it's not hmm. scary for me to just talk. Like no, no. I, I mean, I've done public of... speaking too. It's it's you get I get scared. I rehearse. Like, I'm the person that rehearses ten times actually. Like I'll rehearse ten times, but then you finally get there, and you kind of like live it. You know, you just kind of give in. Yeah. To the crowd. Well, what's weird is like I ha- was I started doing theater when I was like five, and mm. um, even as a kid, like I did children's theater up even up until high school. But like as a kid, I would get annoyed that other people weren't projecting their voice. And I would think, like, I can't hear you. I would think they aren't even <laughs> they aren't even thinking about the person that's sitting on the backs in the back. They aren't even trying to communicate. Mm. Like they don't even care about the audience. And really they're probably afraid or something or like nervous. But well, yeah, but, like, in a sense they couldn't care about the audience because they're yeah. busy feeling the yeah. worry or the anxiety or something. Yeah. Or being anxious, sorry, not anxiety, just feeling yeah. anxious about the situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's anyway, funny because, like, for me, I don't have yeah. stranger danger issues. Like, my it, sh- it always scares my parents because, like, imagine giving, like, parents both IJs and then, like, mm-hmm. you give birth to an EP who will talk to anyone. Like, mm-hmm. I was the baby that never cried. So, like, you passed me to anyone and I wouldn't raise hell. That, like, I, that I was... So everyone's like, where's my baby? And I'm like, oh, he's having fun with, like, somewhere across the block That's over there. That's funny. Like, I kind <laughs> of wondered if, ba- if introvert babies cry more. Oh, I don't know. We'll have I don't to know ask if that's Susan, actually true. She has like, oh yeah, she's got a lot of folks to. I have, should probably talk to a lot of families about that. I don't know. I have a cousin. Well, my cousin's baby is like one, and I, clearly you don't know a personality from someone who's one. But I know that she's a Cancer with a Libra moon and has lots of Cancer placements <laughs> and. I just, I'm like, this girl is going to be introvert. Like, she just looks so uncomfortable at everyone. And she cries. And she's just so sensitive. I, I just, mm. I feel like she's going to be introverted. Like, maybe she's not. But mm. I don't know. I wonder about that stuff. But, but you, you um, just think about it. Yeah. Like, you. Yeah. It's so funny. Um, anyway. I mean, my grandmother always had this thing where she's like, mm-hmm. oh, that baby's going to be an extrovert. Oh, that baby's gonna really? be like talking. Yeah, my grandma she, before she well before she died, but she's when she was still alive. She was like, that was her. And now I don't know her MBTI. Like I didn't hang out with her enough. Oh. Um, but strong personality at least. I maybe she had NI in her system. I don't know because she was very like, boom, that one's gonna be this. And she was right. So well, that was, what's like, interesting weird. is so my dad's an ENFJ and he has a twin who's an ESTJ, and oh, wow. apparently when they were raised. Um, even as babies, it would be like, okay, guys, go to bed. My dad would always listen where the ESTJ would not listen. And mm. like, and like, um, my grandma will say that like, my dad was always the one trying to make her happy and like do things like to make her happy mm. where, yeah. I don't know. So I thought that was, I mean, that's, I it's so fascinating that what if because like, I know like we I make arguments that this is a nurture thing but sometimes yeah. arg- pop, arguments pop up that it could be a nature thing and you're like well I think it's mostly nature I think that nurture is more about your traits and your behavior but I sort of feel like if it was just nurture then it's like I was nurtured to value thinking like well not my parents but like in general like, society might tell you to value like tell me to value si or something Mm. you know um there are certain cases where it's like you can't like it makes me think that not everything has to be that dichotomous you know 
Yeah. Like it, but if it is, but if it is a blend of both, and yeah. I think trying too hard to separate the two, like, like, like I've had the period where I'm like, oh my goodness, it's all nature, nurture, blah, yeah. and I'm like thinking, wait, it, it doesn't explain everything. Like I feel like we're always missing a piece of the puzzle if you try mm. to see, explain it in one way when you yeah. could harmonize it. That's also very yeah. ne. You don't want to look at the black or white and be like, which one is yeah. the reality? Where <laughs> and I will try and understand. <laughs> and I will try and understand maybe what the reality is by understanding what's beneath it. But you're just like, oh, it's all gray, everyone. <laughs> but yeah, there's like a nuance from here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, I try, you know, for the sake of others, <laughs> be like, hey, let's let's think of the concrete. I I don't this I guess this last little gig to mm-hmm. to say. Um, like talking to F, like talking to Jays, especially. Um, I've learned that the best way to communicate without kind of like annoying, like, and it wasn't. It's not even because it's like I know it's gonna annoy it or whatever like that. It's just that mention what position you're in, even if you have no position. Like just verbally express it, because mm-hmm. I'd rather you guys don't like assume, assuming. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't think any J prefers to like be in a realm of limbo, you know, where nothing's like, when you, it's unsure of something. So, but then, you know, for peas, we like that. We like the realm of the unsure. I so, hate that. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we See, we that's the thing. People that. could, people <laughs> might think I'm chaotic, but I don't like the unknown. I'm a J. Mm. You know, like, <laughs> I, I want to know what's going to happen. Like, I do. But and anyway. people might think that I'm super rigid sometimes because I'm like super into scheduling. Mm-hmm. But that's because like I'm trying to accommodate and adapt to everybody mm-hmm. around me. You're so trying to make like... sure your SI is cared for so that your NE can be in La La Land. Yeah. It doesn't mean like that I'm actually a J. Of course not. Goodness gracious. Yeah. No. But like, I, I, I don't know. I've noticed that EJs especially, they really appreciate when I come up to them. I'm like, hey, I don't know. Like, I don't have a position on it. I didn't think it through. I like I just be really honest about it. like I haven't thought this theory through. I don't know all the points about it. I'll get back to you if I do, but let's mm-hmm. be honest, I'm not. And the thing uh, is, the fear be like, oh, good, you know, like thank you. Yeah, you've given me it this. Means one step closer to finding the right thing. Yeah, because it's like I don't. I've learned that I don't want to waste you guys' time, right? Like I don't mm-hmm. want to waste you guys. I'm also realizing that I have time too. I don't want to waste mine babbling mm-hmm. about some bs that i'm probably not even gonna like you know use yeah so it produces nothing so it was just kind of like thing i've no- learned that like the, the communication adjustment isn't a big compromise like just say you don't know what's the big deal yeah perfect i mean like ej that would is- tell me if they don't know like that's not like- yeah <laughs> yeah definitely yeah that's yeah. a great way to end it very enfp quote and you know <laughs> i will link nate's podcast uh subscribe if you want um i also offer typing services if you want me to do more of these comment and let me know what type you want me to dissect and i will try and make that happen so thank you guys so much and have a wonderful rest of your day